Welcome to another episode of the Race to Ascendant series, a series where I try to give tons of race tips and tricks. Last episode we double promoted to Diamond 1 so the road through Diamond begins. Also, I want to give a big shout out to everyone watching this series. I've done a lot of Asian series in the past but the support on this series is insane. You guys are making this fish very happy. Now let's stop the talking and hop into the first game. Hello everyone. There are a lot of different ways to push beyond split with race but this one I really like. And it's really simple, first throw your grenade towards the back of sight in the hope that the enemies will peek and if nobody's peeking, double satchel towards Towards it, easy peasy. Stay slow, stay slow. Whoa, okay. Now a tip for those two versus one situations where you have a spike in your hand. Rule of thumb, don't go for a full plant if you have time. It's better to fake first and then peek the enemy with your teammate so it's a two versus one and you don't give the enemy the chance to get 1v1 duels. He's low, he's low. Nice, good job, good job. As most of you guys know, defending on split is way easier than attacking because there are actually only three choke points. A main, B main and middle. And this is exactly the reason why especially on this map lurking is very important. So when you're playing attacker side, make sure that someone is lurking. Got him, got him, got him. Also, in the post plant on A, there's nothing wrong with pushing the defender spawn a little bit if you have a spectre in your head. You have to find those close range fights with this gun, so that's what I did. One, two, one, ten. Screens. one enemy remaining. Now look at this round. When you see a sage ball like this, of course the enemy is gonna jump on it. They always do that. If you know that the enemy is about to push something, don't keep your crosshair too close to the angle. Aim a little bit to the left of the wall or the right of the wall and let the enemies walk into your crosshair. Oh la la! Okay, she is uh, the thing about double jumps, as long as you get the enemy, it's good enough. And also, if you're peeking heaven from elbow, hook the right side of the wall. And hook the left side for peeking the defender spawn. One enemy remaining. Yes. Some people are standing in the middle, just don't do that. You're standing a bit more in the open then. In 1v1 situations, I would recommend to be as silent as possible. In this round, I could have rushed the enemy after I heard the defuse, but I had enough time and because I was silent, the enemy didn't know exactly where I was. Easy round. One enemy remaining. Yep. Whoa. Nice. <laughs> in the second half however things didn't went well we were 12 to 7 ahead but then suddenly lost a lot of rounds back to back and made it all the way to 12 to 11 the problem was that we were doing the same thing over and over again so that's when i made this call oh, damn, yeah, let's uh, completely change positions <laughs> yes my friends when things don't work out don't forget to switch things up some of you guys might already have seen the tiktok but in the end we won this game Hello. attack helicopter Good game, my friends. Good game. Plus 21 on art. Let's go to the next one. Hello, everyone. In the second round, we tried to push A. When pushing A, I would highly recommend that at least one guy is going through 3. In this round, nobody of my team went 3, so the enemy had like a safe spot over there. Pushing 3 from A is hard to do, so I was lucky that Race was peeking me. Maybe one uh, sent a 3. Yeah, oh. Earlier this video I said that you had to be silent in 1v1s, well there's one exception and that's when the time is about to run out. Well played. Ah, not today, not today. Luckily, I've learned from the mistake, so two rounds later I decided to go through three myself. I'm behind you, Sage. No problem. And I'm also behind you, Reyna. Man oh man, it's so easy to scare the enemies on this map. When people are using the race ultimate, they're often gonna rush towards the enemies. But sometimes you don't see enemies. When this happens to you, consider walking instead of running. When you don't make any sound, there's a chance that the enemies will walk into your ulti. Oh my Bro. If I made sound over there, Breach would've probably run away until my ult was over. Now the big question, can Mr. Lowlander finally win a clutch? Last player standing. Gonna ult someone, I think. Oh, of course, I'm so dumb. Yeah, of course not. What did I say in 1v1s? Be silent. I had enough time over there, should have walked. In this round, I made a big mistake. Don't be like me. When you are using the race ultimate, it actually takes a pretty long time before you can shoot it. So when you want to peek the enemies with your ulti, wait till the animation is over. No! I peeked too early over here, my bad. Also, like I said earlier on this map, be careful for the flankers. Sage scared me over here. What the? Okay, one. Here's a tip for all the Sage players, on Seaside, don't place your wall over there. You can just look over it. Ah, you can't wall this, my friend, you can't wall this. When you hear the door open on 3, you could stand next to the wall. Now, if the enemies are pushing through the left side of the door, the door will slowly open and you can get some 1v1 battles. This is what I mean, look at this clip. Got him, got him. Spike, we got Spike down. Now tricks straight from the tips and tricks sent by you series. Step 1, satchel on this box. And step 2, use your satchel to kill the enemies easy peasy. Three for me. No, 
That's it, dude. That's it. Whoop, 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 whoop. A few rounds later, this game ended up in overtime. And honestly, if you're playing C using this ramp for a small little head glitch spot, it's very OP. Yeah, okay. I'm okay. Oh. But uh, don't try to set your jump straight into the enemies if they know where you are. Or this might happen. Whoopsie. Oh, why did I do that? And at the very end, this game was a draw. I don't like it when people draw. Luckily, the next game wasn't a draw because this happened. Grenade! Where's my gun? Oh, I got no, him with my nade. I think I get it. Oh, lucky. One enemy yes! Oh, yeah, nice. easy peasy. I won the round on 0 0.02 seconds, but in the end we lost the game instead. Hello, everyone. If there's an enemy and a boombot coming towards you, always shoot the enemy first. You can try to dodge the boombot, but the enemy you can't. Where's the fucking line? Yeah, maybe you sound like it. <laughs> Pushing aggressively in the second round with good guns is often not the best option. Unless you're 100% sure where all the enemies are. In this round my teammate called that all the enemies were a main. So I decided to cut the rotators. That's right. Yeah, yeah, just don't look at my aim. I need to do more aim trainers. Yeah. Nice. Wanna see the 5 kills with ultimate? Here, what? Also, don't set the expectations too high, my friends. Before this round, I never believed that skins would give you an unfair advantage. But the bullet traces of the RTX Phantom are so extremely overpowered. Because you see the bullet traces so clearly, I think it's a bit easier to control your spray with the skin. Next. Still not believe me? I mean, look at this. One smart kick. Yo, this skin gives aimbot. Anyway, big tip for everyone who want to play aggressive. If you want to go for an aggressive push, don't go alone, but do it together with a teammate. Nice teamwork, Reyna. Nice. When pushing something, always think about your crosshair placement. I know it's a basic trick, but in this clip, my crosshair placement was way off. Should have aimed more to the right here. What the heck, shotgun on the rafters. When you're planning to lurk, don't push immediately. It's always better to first let your teammates make a bit of noise in the hope that the enemies will push you first. And Race walked right into my trap. Up. It's also important to try to read the enemies, and the enemy race was always pushing. That's not very smart of you, Race, so I made another easy kill over here. Yeah. And now a very cool aggressive set show. Feels nice to get the enemies like this. Oh, one enemy remaining. Nice. And after this kill... We won, easy peasy. Plus 21 or two more, let's go to the next one. Hello everyone. In the post plant on Seaside, I would not recommend to stand on the platform. The reason for this is because the enemies will be able to peek you from two different angles. And that's not good my friends, the only reason I stood on the platform was because CT was smoke. But still, a risky spot. Whoa. And what can I say, in the post plant it's all about timing my friends. If the spike isn't defused till half, never peek immediately. Just wait like 4 seconds. <laughs> Nice. Now look at this clip and tell me what you think I did wrong over here. Oh, give me all. Did you see it? Sometimes it's not really obvious, but uh... <laughs> what? I didn't check the corner. Yeah, this game went a bit rusty. I mean, look at this double jump. Mr. Lowlander, what are you doing, my friend? Whoa, I mean, I got him. <laughs> that counts, right? Okay, um, this next round I actually don't want to show. But you know what? By showing it, you can learn from my mistakes. So uh, just don't be like me. In the corner, what in the corner? It's the second time this game already I get killed from that corner by Reyna. I'm really supposed to be in silver, I think. Remember what I said earlier this video? If you want to go for an aggressive push on the defender side, push together with the teammate. So I pushed mid together with Sage. One enemy remaining. Nice. The rest of the game was pretty boring and in the end we won. Plus 20 RR, one more my friends. But after this game I had some bad games. And the deadline of this video was coming so I guess no uprank today. Maybe in the next episode. I hope I see you there. Feel free to subscribe. Bye bye.